Hello everyone. Today we're going to be opening up and checking out the Hako C1492 desoldering control box for the FM2024 desoldering gun. I really like these desoldering guns. Um, they're convertible. You can go pencil style. And to change the nozzle, it really requires no major tooling. Um, it does come, if it's hot, you've got a holder so you can take it out without burning yourself. So, yeah, these, I, that's really nice design. Um, so, let's open this up. And, you know, in my last video, um, I am done with Hako. It's not for quality control reasons or anything. It's due to their stance on the right to repair, releasing schematics and stuff uh, for soldering stations and their accessories. Um, it's basically F you not till the law makes us. Well, it looks like California uh, SB 244. It's on the governor's desk. It's only got a few days left before it automatically becomes law without a signature. So as long as California Governor uh, Newsom does not veto it, which if he does veto it, it's got a two-thirds majority already in voting because it pretty much passed unanimously um, for a veto override. So if you don't sign it after 12 days, it automatically becomes law so i don't know if that's 12 business days or 12 uh just calendar days um we shall find out monday because that's the 12th day and so tuesday it might get put on the books um that would be the october 3rd not sure if i'll have this video uploaded by then but hako the law is making you so here we go yeah now i really do like this unit um it's pneumatic not electric electric are noisy and loud and if you're doing this for a few hours you know if, if you got a whole bunch of joints to desolder um it gets to your brain that uh, the the electronic pump noise so pneumatics are nice and quiet they're very effective. I think they produce a lot more uh, vacuum. Um, so they are a little bit more work. So I'll give me an example here. This, I believe, is a 1.6 nozzle. 1.6 hole. Um, when you set it up, you'll set your air pressure which connects here, you can put compressed there here, it goes to a regulator, and you'll set that about 71, 72 PSI, um, and you'll insert, insert your nozzle, and you'll pull your trigger, and you'll adjust it to 71, 72 PSI right in that range. Um, it's gonna vary um, due to your altitude and the density of your, and the temperature. Of where you're at so if you're in Denver your air is less dense you're gonna have to uh, adjust it to you have uh, proper vacuum you could put a where your vacuum line goes in here you can put a vacuum gauge and you can adjust it for peak for your nozzle so you'll automatically just know you got a 1.6 nozzle you just dial it into that but they are a little bit more work compared to the electrics, but I think they're a lot, they're a lot superior. So this is what we have inside this thing. There's not much. Let me disconnect this line. You can see the numbers on the Venturi system. 24 volt I was thinking about repurposing one of these since I've got about five or six of these units 
um, to make a pneumatic vacuum pickup tool because I've got an electric one and again it's annoying I'd like to just be able to hit a foot pedal and come in with a vacuum pen and be able to place my parts pick, pick up and place the parts so uh, I, I might adventure into that I don't know once I get my new soldering station up and going um, We'll figure it out. Let's see if I can zoom in here. This is a single-sided board. I might, like I said, I might repurpose one of these and then just tear this thing completely down, scan the board, and put it on my blog post of the original teardown of this thing. Trying to get into there. If you can get a view of that transistor, might be able to do it. Nope, not going to be able to do it. But... Yeah, you got the annoying neighbor dogs. I hope this six minute video, seven minute video helps somebody out maybe. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.